Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about character design or sort of how I approach it or approached it for this piece. Um, I was kind of going for a style that was uh, in the vein of Final Fantasy Tactics. Um, and if you're not familiar, you can Google it and look it up. Uh, it has a pretty unique art style. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I did have an underdrawing when I began this. The reason that I, I didn't do the whole thing is I think um, even without the underdrawing, this ended up being almost four hours. Uh, obviously, I've trimmed it down to about 30. It's at about 600% speed. Um, but uh, I, I didn't want to necessarily have all of the, the underdrawing stuff while we talk about the design. So um, so here I started with this, or I'm starting with this, this bird creature. And uh, this is sort of, you know, being in the sort of fantasy or Final Fantasy um, tactics slash Final Fantasy IX sort of uh, idea or following that that sort of thread um, I did want to have an inhuman character to go with my two human characters uh, something that you know could stand out a little bit more maybe provide a little bit more interest so I came up with this bird creature um, some of the big things I had to think about with it uh, the biggest one is probably whether or not to put clothes on it um, with any sort of fantasy creature or um, sort of anthropomorphized creature, you know, something that, that looks human but isn't. Uh, you do have to think a little bit about where they come from, uh, especially in character design, what their culture is going to look like. And I wanted for this piece to make it, to make this creature look civilized. Uh, I didn't want it to just be some hulking, you know, dumb creature, um, or maybe even just a pet of somebody else. You know, I wanted to give it personality. I wanted it to, to feel different. So... In that vein, I did decide to give it some jewelry and some clothes, and those are just trappings of culture, you know, trappings that, you know, people in a civilized society uh, or, or really any kind of society would have jewelry or adornments um, and, you know, just something to put on themselves. Uh, plus for birds, it kind of makes sense, uh, you know, a lot of the tropes of birds are that they collect and, you know, harvest bunches, bunches of little shiny things. So I decided to give this bird some shiny things. Uh, another big part of character design is to look at the silhouette of the character. In this case, I was a little worried that if um, that the, the bird creature would look a little generic uh, without those sort of large feathers coming off of its arm. Um, you know, ideally it does have them on both arms, but you know, they'd be behind it uh, at that angle, so you wouldn't be able to see real goal was to sort of break out that silhouette so it didn't, you know, if it were just standing around, uh, it wouldn't look like maybe just some really weird, tall, malformed creature uh, to make it very clearly a bird creature. Uh, so it has these sort of almost wings uh, on its side. Uh, I did decide that this character probably was some sort of caster or spell slinger. And that's why it has a crystal uh, sort of floating there to sort of give that indication, which I think reads pretty quickly. Uh, people who are familiar with the, the Final Fantasy franchise see, oh, crystal, that means magic. Um, and, that, and that's kind of how I wanted that to read. Plus, uh, magic caster sort of people um, in most games, they wear cloth. You know, they don't wear a lot of armor or plating. Um, why that is, I'm not. I'm sure there's. It's probably more of a game balance reason than anything else. Uh, but so I, I didn't want to put this character in heavy armor. So instead, it's just wearing kind of a coat or a, a vest. Uh, and also, you know, I, I thought about putting this character in pants. Uh, ultimately, you know, it was a design choice not to do that. Um, pants create a lot of sort of logistical issues for characters, uh, especially animal characters that would have tails. Uh, which this one does it has that, that sort of bird tail in the back and it you know if, if you put pants on a character you have to think about you know how far down is that pant going to go is it going to go all the way sort of like how people wear pants to the ankle um, or is it going to you know is it where is there going to be a hole for the tail those sort of things and since a bird tail isn't really like it's not like a monkey tail it's not one uh, single sort of sinuous strand of muscle uh, it's a whole bunch of feathers um, sort of a triangle. I didn't want you'd ha you'd essentially either have to have the pant be really really low to allow the tail to come over, uh, or you'd have to have this giant sort of slot in the back. Which I thought, you know, if the tail fans out, it doesn't make sense. Like, how would the bird even put that on? 
Um, and so those are the kind of, you know, rationalizations. Uh, it's just when you're doing character design to make your character a little bit more believable, you know, think about how they're going to wear this thing, um, you know, and how it's going to fit them if it does at all. Uh, and that's the same sort of um, with the, the character's boots. Uh, it made sense to me uh, on a sort of digitized legs, uh, which is, you know, where they're bent backwards like that. Um, that part that the foot guard that this character has is protecting is technically on, on an animal like this, it would be the foot. Um, the, if, if you follow the, the thigh down, the first joint is the knee, and that second joint is essentially the ankle. Uh, which on this character you can see there's a little uh, prehensile uh, nubbin uh, with a little claw, uh, which would be essentially the thumb of the foot, but that would be the ankle, and then the foot is that long piece that actually reaches the ground, which is the ball of the foot, and then it extends into the two talons. Um, I did give the, the creature on the feet just sort of the two walking feet, uh, or two walking um, uh, toes, uh, and that was sort of, you know, Creatures and uh, animals in the natural world typically have the same number of digits on their hands and feet. Um, or, you know, you know, horses have one hoof on the front, one hoof on the back foot, uh, things like that. So, you know, I wanted to make sure that they matched up and that, you know, if there are, if his hands or its hands are two fingers and a, and a thumb sort of claw, then the feet should also be essentially two toes and then the vestigial um sort of claw coming off of the ankle there. Um, on a normal bird, that would that would be down. I, you know, they, they typically walk all, on their toes with the, um, there's an actual like toe in the back. But since this creature is a little bit more upright, it made more sense to just kind of gloss over it and let it be in the back. Uh, and then of course, like, you know, as I was saying with the adornments, you know, I've got like a little satchel and I included a sort of uh, pattern on it to make it look a little fancier. Um, I wanted to try to uh, mimic the the tactic style a little bit, which is why I'm using this particular type of shading, um, which is usually made up of these sort of horizontal, um, little tiny horizontal lines, uh, which is, uh, it, it, I, they kind of use it to bring out uh, mid-tone. A lot of the tactics um, art style you, relies pretty heavily on a lot of uh, sort of desaturated mid-tones for the, the character art. And these little lines uh, help keep your shadowed areas from getting super dark. Uh, so instead you can throw a mid-tone in there and it, it just offsets it a little bit so it looks like it's shadow, but it's not overwhelming to the point where uh, it you know looks like a McFarlane comic and there's just huge deep blacks. Uh, detailing in some of the feathers. Um, again, I, I don't imagine that this character could fly. Uh, I think it's more these would just be, you know, as this creature was evolved or as it um, was created. Uh, maybe, you know, it's some sort of magician or a wizard created this race uh, by combining people with birds. Uh, it just had those feathers left over. Uh, and it's the same. I, I added some adornments too to the uh, the leg guards. There, you can see it has some like little cloth pinions on there. Um, that's again. I wanted to make the creature look a little cultured. Um, so he even has like a, sort of a those rings around its neck. Um, and that was sort of a, still an attempt to be um, to show that this creature has some sort of culture about it. It's not just a simple beast. And here we have the soldier character. Uh, this one I was really going for sort of a traveling white knight sort of character. Um, you know, someone who on the Dungeons and Dragons scale is probably a lawful good, maybe naive, um, but not dumb. You know, they are traveling around the world and so dressed kind of light. Uh, they do have sort of a, you know, their, their pauldrons, simple pauldrons and, and a chest plate um, and some, some guards on their legs. But otherwise, you know, it's just kind of heavy leather. They're not necessarily looking to start a fight, but it looks like they would be handy in one. Uh, this little tabard or girdle kind of in the middle there, uh, when I was doing that, I, I did want to sort of have that aspect of, you know, noble warriors wearing a tabard with heraldry on them, uh, but I didn't want it so obvious. Uh, the tactics are, they're really good at layering cloth to create a, 
you know, it, it's not a particularly complex style, but there are so many things overlapping that it can create a lot of interest. Um, and so I wanted to sort of have a, the idea of a tabard um, without necessarily, you know, having that, that giant piece of cloth that goes from the, the top of the, uh, the chest piece all the way down through the belt and then kind of creates a, a loincloth. Um, I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting. So decided to split it down the middle and when you do that, you know, which is, is, is fine, uh, you still do have to think about how that thing is going to hang on the body, like what's going to keep it on there. And in this case, I just put in, you know, some, some lacing. Uh, so the idea is, you know, you would have to lace it up and tie it to tight to fit onto him. Um, and it's honestly, it's, that's the hardest thing about clothing. Um, I know in, in video games and things, you can get away with a lot uh, when, you know, creating neat silhouettes, you know, giant pauldrons and things. Um, but, you know, if, if you want your art to read a little bit more realistic, uh, it is always good to think about how that piece that you're drawing of clothing hangs onto a person. You know, if you take a towel and wrap it around yourself, you know, without like tucking it in to create tension, you just wrap it around yourself and you let go, it's just going to fall to the floor. So there has to be something creating tension. Um, and it's the same thing with like a pauldron, a uh, little shoulder piece. If you just set something on your shoulder and you start walking around, it's going to fall off. It has to be attached to something. Um, shirts and, and you know, like his, his chest piece, it's easy to explain that, you know, it, it would go over the shoulder. So it is essentially hanging off his shoulder. Uh, but with anything hanging onto it, there needs to be some way it connects. And sometimes those are hidden. Sometimes they're underneath. Like I assume with the pauldron, it's, it's going to be underneath it uh, because you don't want somebody attacking you and then slashing that, you know, buckle. Um, and having the pauldron fall off, that's not so good. So uh, here again, just detailing out some of the gloves and things. Um, I did want this character to look like they were a bit of a traveler, so I gave them a pouch. Um, a lot of the characters that I draw that are adventurers will have some sort of pouch on them because it makes sense. Um, so if you're, you're somebody who's kind of into the Dungeons and Dragons scene or um, you're just interested in drawing sort of RPG style characters, uh, giving your characters pouches uh, can actually, it, you know, strangely, it helps a lot. Uh, not only does it create another sort of doodad on their belt or interesting thing that they have, uh, because, you know, there are thousands, millions, billions of types of pouches that you could draw on there, uh, but it makes the character look like they're travel ready. It looks like they're ready to go places and do things. And that's really important um, for like an RPG style character. You know, these, these characters aren't at home. They're not, you know, in their city, lording over people, they're adventuring, they're running around. So they probably have something to keep their, you know, money, maybe a little bit of food on them, things like that. Um, oh, and since I was going for a knight character, I did end up giving the character a sword. Um, that's just sort of a, a trope decision. Um, since I wanted the character to sort of represent that white knight-ish character, uh, I'd just settled it. I, I knew pretty much right away that they were going to have a sword. Just finishing up some of the shading on this particular character. Uh, boots are also kind of fun to do. Um, in the tactic style, the boot goes pretty far up the leg. Um, you know, they don't wear shoes. They wear these giant massive boots um, with something to kind of protect the knee, uh, which is why I have that the little piece of I, th I think my intent is for these to be kind of leather. Oh, and here is where I, for I, I realized that my leg was in the wrong spot, and so I decided to move it. Uh, thank goodness for digital, because uh, you can do that. You can basically just select it out, move it wherever you need it, and then just you know draw on the lines to sort of fix it, um, which is something that is very much harder to do when you're doing uh, non-digital. You know, I've, I've had to do that, and it's not fun uh, essentially redrawing your... Uh, your entire leg because you decided to put it in the wrong place when you were doing your sketch. Now this character, this is the sort of female fencer. Um, I, my goal really was to just sort of have one male, one female, and then a creature of some sort um, all allied together. Uh, when doing character design like this, um, I really, well for me anyway, in this particular case, I was really trying to put myself uh, in the shoes of if I was working in a studio uh, what are the steps I would have to go through? How would I have to work um, so that my, you know, creative director or whoever was going into this 
where I could kind of maximize my usage out of it. Um, and so I do use a lot more layers in this than I typically would. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about why that is in the uh, color section. But uh, to talk a little bit on her design, um, I, I'm not a huge fan of, especially like uh, female warrior characters. I don't like putting them in things that, you know, are basically not combat worthy. Um, I like their clothing to fit their personality or their intent. Um, so, you know, if, if you're in this case, she's wearing a, a sort of a, a breastplate just to cover the chest. Um, but it's not huge. It's, it's probably a, a thin sheet of metal just to kind of block uh, blows that come in. Um, it's also not formed to her chest because that doesn't make a lot of sense. There are millions of videos out there. I'm sure you can find one as to why it is a really bad idea to have sort of a cleft in the middle of chest armor. Um, but I, I also wanted her to kind of feel, um, I just want to say roguish or piratey. Um, somebody who is maybe a little bit more in for a scrape than the sort of white knight character that I had. So I gave her some clothes that are a little bit more piratey, but also still um, decidedly feminine. Since the Final Fantasy games, by and large, um, and I'm talking like Tactics, Final Fantasy IX, um, six to a degree and, and earlier, um, really are kind of in a, a medieval state. Um, that you know the, the characters and people that exist there, it's kind of a medieval society, and so in that society. Uh, you know, that she's coming from, I imagine that, you know, maybe she comes from a nation that is a little more rough and tumble, so a little bit more loose with the rules, but still, um, you know, still has a certain expectation of, you know, you know women wearing dresses or, or whatever. Um, I also thought it was interesting to give her sort of the ability to transcend a little bit. So, you know, if she's ready for combat, she's got her thick leather jacket on to help protect from, you know, uh, glancing blows and things like that. She's got her breastplate on, um, but she's also got this dress. So you know, maybe if she was going to try to to scuttle out and get some information, she might ditch the breastplate, maybe ditch the jacket, um, and then ditch some of the plates that are on her boots and just go out like that, and then would just blend in with a crowd. Um, so I kind of wanted to give her that multi-level um, sort of interest to her where she wasn't just like, oh, she's clearly this one person. Um, and I think when you do rogues or do people that are supposed to be sort of sneaky or uh, maybe a little scoundrel-like, it's good to think about those multi-layers of wherever it is that they come from or the situations that they're going to have to engage in um, to kind of figure out how their design works. Uh, in this one, I, in this particular section, I'm just kind of working out the composition of how they're going to stand. Um, when I was talking a little bit earlier about, you know, uh, working in an art studio, uh, it's not so so worrisome of like, you know, I, it was a little bit, can these characters work together? Um, but it was also, if I'm going to put them in a single piece, where, the sh where should they be standing so that you can see the most of the design without too much of it hiding behind other characters? Um, and so a lot of that is just me rearranging it to make sure that things show uh, where I want them to. Uh, the goal was not only to be able to have these all in a single piece so that an art director or something could see what they look like together, uh, but also to be able to show them apart uh, individually. That way, if you know a marketing person came in and said, hey, that bird creature, I want it by itself. Um, if it's all one piece, that's problematic because if it's all flattened down, you can't pull that bird creature out. I'd have to essentially redraw parts of it. But uh, by having them all separate on separate layers, um, I'm able to basically say, oh yeah, you want the bird creature? Here, pull it out, send it to the, the art person, and away they go with it. Um, and then again, this is me working out uh, sort of the uh, composition. Um, I don't want to go too deep into it. Maybe I'll, I'll do a video. I think actually the if you look at my Dark Below video, I talk a little bit about composition. Um, for me, the, the biggest thing is tracking sort of the general shapes and where they're going to lead the eye um, and trying to keep the eye within the picture. Um, I will say that I was mostly focused on the characters with this, so the background that I end up with I'm not super happy about. Um, 
but I think the character designs uh, did come out pretty well. Uh, oh, so yeah, here I'm throwing in color. I had a pretty good idea of what colors I wanted to use. Um, some of that is just based off of the what I would essentially call the source material. Um, I have a, a Final Fantasy Tactics poster hanging in my office, so uh, I was kind of looking at that and being like, okay, that makes sense for these colors. Um, and there's a character, uh, I believe her name is Agrius. Uh, I may have to double check, um, but she has that sort of high blue collar um, with yellow accents. And that, she's kind of a white knight character, and um, it made sense. Uh, you know, blue is sort of a noble royal color, um, and so I, I figured I would pull that into it. Um, I also didn't want this, uh, you know, when, when you're doing character design, color is important as well. Um, if I had used lots of reds, it would probably make this character come off, maybe not evil, but um, maybe a little more royal guard sort of, uh, instead of sort of noble wandering knight, uh, because colors really do mean things to different people. And it's the same with like, you know, the, the armor, if you look at the plate plates that he's wearing, they're not like silver, they're not, you know, steely white or, or anything like that, or that steel blue color. They're sort of an off bronze, um, which I, I was thinking is kind of like, you know, if this character is traveling and on the road a lot, Maybe it's a, a tarnished, um, maybe it's a hand-me-down or an heirloom that the character received, and it made sense to not uh, not use something that made the character look overly noble, since I am sort of banking on the idea that they are a traveler. And with this character, um, because she was kind of already moving into that pirate rogue sort of space, um, I did keep her color scheme uh, sort of more in that vein, so, you know, deep reds, uh, she's got her dark brown jacket, um, and I did want to make sure that the characters sort of tied into each other, and so, you know, for the humans, just, uh, you know, obviously they're both human, so there's, there's some similarity there. Um, I also used sort of a yellow uh, edging for her stuff um, to sort of give the idea that maybe that's kind of like a some sort of indication of, of culture for, for humans. Uh, my thought was that she's probably not from the same place that he is. Uh, so she has a, a darker skin tone. Uh, maybe it's, you know, again, kind of playing into the pirate rogue or um, pirate rogue idea. You know, maybe it's a place that's closer to the ocean. So she would have, you know, darker bronze skin, you know, maybe a little bit more Spaniard or, or Mexico. Um, and so I, I, I didn't want to have, you know, an entirely white bread group, um, but it made sense for him because, you know, he looks a little bit more European, uh, you know, sort of knights factor into the sort of European um, medieval age, whereas she looks like, you know, maybe she's been at sea once or twice, um, and so it made more sense to use some um, sort of a darker skin tone for her. And then the bird creature... Uh, this one I did not, even though I was pulling from Final Fantasy, uh, I did not want it to look like a giant chocobo. Um, so I decided to pick some different colors. Uh, maybe, I think it actually, you know, while it, it kind of looks like a, almost like, kind of like a chocobo, but, you know, maybe a, a raven-ish. Um, my thought was that maybe she and it, uh, the bird creature, come from the same township or nation or somewhere close um, and so I ended up sort of tying their colors together so you know obviously they're different races but um, even though they're different races you know you can kind of tie groups together by their color and so in this case that red that I used for her kind of became the color for this creature's vest um, also if she you know she's sort of a pirate um, or rogue, then having a, a bird creature that maybe has some sort of bird of paradise or parrot sort of coloring, uh, with this kind of blue-green, uh, kind of makes sense. You know, it, it, it sort of ties them into that theme, and I think that's what you kind of have to look for is, um, or, or think about is, you know, even though I haven't developed an entire world around these characters, you know, this was really just kind of like, let's just do some character design. Um, when building characters, especially if they're going to be together, 
you know, you have to kind of think about the story of maybe why these characters are together, how they get there. You know, I can imagine that this knight is on some sort of noble mission, and the first thing that happens is he stops off in this port city um, where he bumps into this girl who maybe steals his coin. She runs off. Um, he tracks her down, and when he finally finds her, she's with this bird caster and he explains his mission and it's you know world ending or super important and somehow he convinces the two of them to come along on his adventure so you know i've kind of generated this story but that you know you have the the point is that there has to be some sort of rationale that kind of keeps all these people together um and and why they sort of fit and you can go away outside the box and not have any of that i'm just saying in an rpg sort of idea you know when you're drawing characters like this it's a good idea to have some sort of through line uh, that makes sense. Um, so in this case, the bird and the girl sort of tie together. Um, for me, it's mostly just the design of their clothing um, is kind of what what makes them fit. And really, this bird character even looks like me. You know, maybe the bird character is some sort of royalty. He's got a lot of gold on it. Um, is a caster, and you know, unless it's some sort of innate spellcaster, uh, you know, wizardry uh, often in, in you know, fantasy stuff requires a lot of schooling. So, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you could concoct and change the story. But, you know, as an artist, it's a good idea, especially for, for doing design work, is to have, and, and honestly, if you're doing it for someone, um, probably even more so, you know, kind of get the story from them. So if they mention, oh, yeah, this character is a caster and, um, you know, they cast spells through this sort of snake um, staff like have that when you draw it on the character um, you know really think about those kinds of things um, and this work that I'm doing now um, is basically I'm, I'm using a layer mask I well I was using it for coloring and now I'm putting in shadow and things um, the reason that I'm saving all of these layers is again thinking of if I'm gonna work professionally uh, doing this or I was in a studio if an art director took the final version of the character art and gave it to somebody who is going to make a 3D model. The 3D modeler only is going to have whatever image I give them. Like, you know, they'll just get, get the final image. And so there might be questions about, okay, I see the shadows and I see sort of the highlights, but I don't know when rendering, you know, or when I have to paint the textures what what is the base color of this character like where where do i start um, and so the reason to keep um, in this case i would say if you're just going to do an illustration it doesn't matter because the the final piece is the final piece but in game art and character art they may want to reuse it or they're going to use it as reference for something else so in which case you would want to keep the under layer that has that base color so that when they come back and they say hey you know, Josh, I see, you know, this looks great. Or this is the one we're using, but what color are the pants actually? So that we make sure that, you know, they, we can add that color and adjust, but we want the base color. So we have something to start with. All I have to do is turn off all the layers above it. And then just, I can just pick that color out instead of having to try to remember or refigure out, oh, it's this one, I think, like this is close. Um, you can be much more exacting and get the exact color that you need. Um, and that's the reason for doing it this way. Um, also, you know, before I started coloring, you probably noticed that um, when I set up my masks, I put down a flat gray. The big reason to do that um, is to negate any transparency that might crop in um, because you don't want a transparency in your character. Because at the end of the day, um, you know, they may take the all the characters, you know, grouped as I had them, or maybe they just want one and they want to throw it on a white background or a green background or a black background. And you don't want that background changing the colors of the character. You know, they can fiddle with the character and, and the levels and all, all that stuff all they want, um, but it makes it harder when you have that extra layer of transparency. Um, there are times when, you know, it is good to include the transparency, but in most cases, I would say, if you're doing character art, uh, try not to have a transparency in the background. 
uh, or transparency within the character itself. You want it to be a, some semblance of solid. Um, and the reason that I used gray or sort of a mid gray is I knew that a lot of the, the tones in this were going to be sort of a, a mid tone gray. And um, if, you know, with the brush I'm using, and you can see it really clearly on her skirt, there's that sort of part where it's a little pink um, as opposed to the, the darker red um, or the, the more saturated red, is that the, the gray, even if you don't color over it particularly well, um, you just kind of hit it, it still pulls off the color. Um, you know, gray is super neutral. So when, you know, a viewer is looking at it, it sort of picks up the colors that are around it and helps it blend. So even if you miss a spot, uh, it's typically not super glaring. Now, when I did the, the shadow parts that I'm doing now, I did clean up a lot of the color. Um, the idea here is like, I didn't clean up the under part because really that's just a color reference. Um, this over part is more or less the final color. So this does have to be a lot more clean. And if they want, you know, if they said, well, we want this lit from a different angle, I would have to repaint that anyway. So I'm not really losing anything by kind of having a, a slightly messy under layer. Um, but I do need this layer to be pretty clean. Uh, and also, you know, I, I kind of mentioned, um, you know, I, I did want to kind of have a, a together piece with them. Um, and so I'm using lighting that uh, I don't commonly use, but um, it was it's on this poster uh, that I really, really love. If I can find a, a link, I'll put it in the comments, but um, or in, in the doobly-doo, as they say. Um, and the lighting is very extreme. It's very uh, sort of sunrise or sunset, uh, which creates these really harsh sort of highlights, very bright. Um, and uh, so that that was kind of how I was I was intending on lighting. It was much easier to do her and and uh, the sort of soldier character because they're turned away from the sun, so the highlights are pretty easy to draw. Um, whereas the bird creature is turned kind of into it. I'd also mention that I do realize her sword is incorrect. Uh, I kind of realized that after I'd finished it. Uh, this is why uh, references are good, folks. Um, if I'd really been thinking about it, I wouldn't have made that mistake, but uh, her blade is rotated incorrectly. Um, the, a blade for a sword uh, runs parallel, uh, i.e. the same direction as your forearm. So the sharp bits uh, would be pointing out, um, or if you know it's a double-sided, it would be pointing towards your forearm and away from your forearm, because when you swing down, you know, that motion, that blade needs to be lined up. So her saber is actually tilted the wrong way. Um, she would sort of have to like weirdly s swing it sideways to like hit anybody and it's just not good. So I apologize for that for any fencers who are out there. Uh, I did realize that at the end. <laughs> um, so shame on me. Uh, and yeah, so throwing in that same sort of shading. And like I said, it was harder on this guy. Um, really for a couple of reasons. Uh, so with light uh, and, and highlights and things, uh, light reflect, refracts, sorry. And uh, for shiny objects, it bounces almost completely. Like it, it hits the surface, the surface bounces it off and it you know scatters around a little bit. Um, but if it hits skin or cloth, feathers in this case, fur, um, you get what is called diffusion which is where the light hits it, but instead of sort of bouncing back at these really bright, sharp uh, angles, or you know, even, even bone uh, will, will bounce light pretty, pretty hard. Um, but when it gets diffused, some of the light penetrates and goes in. Uh, some of the light bounces off at a weird angle, so you, you know, your eye doesn't see it. So you don't get really bright highlights. Um, for some feathers and things, yes, you could argue you will. Uh, because they create essentially a flat plane for it to bounce off of. Um, but, you know, if it's down, which is kind of what this character looks like, they're, they're mostly made out of, uh, you know, sort of soft feather, um, you're not going to get a lot of real hard bounces. Um, like, you know, if, if you ever see a, a video of like a little baby chick and they're shining a light on it, you know, it doesn't look like that chick is made out of gold. It looks like they're just kind of a fuzzball, and that's because the light is entering the feathers and bouncing around all inside the feathers before it exits and, you know, you get to see it. 
um, which is something just to think about when you know doing this sort of highlight. Um, I I honestly did not go um, super crazy with figuring out how it would diffuse. Uh, instead, I just kind of went with um, my gut and just getting it in, because really the goal was just to have an idea of where that light source was going to be and not be super technical about it and try to do everything at once. Um, so, you know, I added it there. There are some big, pretty big planes of flat color, uh, but nothing super crazy. And then here I'm just noodling in the background, um, which again, I wasn't a super fan of kind of how it came out, but since the focus was the, um, the characters themselves, I did kind of get to this point and uh, was ready to more or less call it done. Um, since my focus was was the characters, uh, I did get rid of that gradient. Um, if you're having ever having trouble drawing, and I think I mentioned this before, it's always a good idea just to throw something in the background. Um, for me, that gradient, um, you know, when I was kind of getting into it, um, was just to sort of keep the the mood in mind uh, when I was drawing these characters. And um, like I said, I wasn't, you know, the, the background isn't anything special, but you know, with the focus kind of being character centric, it's not a super worrisome uh, thing for me. Uh, but yeah, there they are. Um, I, I think in the end, um, I, I felt like they came out pretty well. Um, I think the characters um, with sort of how they're posed, you can even kind of get an idea of their personalities a little bit. You know, she looks ready to fight. Uh, maybe the knight is a little bit more uh, hesitant. Maybe he wants to talk first, but, you know, he looks like he's kind of posed um, in a way that he might act soon. Uh, and the bird maybe is just taking sort of a cautionary lead from her, um, which, again, kind of factors into sort of the story aspect, right? Um, so all things to think about. Um, thank you all for watching, and I hope uh, hope you learned something. I'll see you next time.